So, um, hello everyone, and welcome to this Scientix webinar, Top Tech Tools for Teachers. My name is Marina Jimenez Iglesias, and I will moderate this session. With us today, we have Neil Jarrett. Neil is a six-year six -year teachers and math coordinator at an international school in Bangkok in Thailand. He's originally from London, and he has recently awarded with a Master of Education with distinction. Please, again, if everyone could turn on their um, microphones, we can't... Thank you. Um, Neil is interested in educational technology and in ways to support student learning. He's a Google certified educator and he runs the website ED Tech for Beginners, a blog on how he uses tech in his day-to-day -day practice. During, this, during his presentation, Neil will present a number of online tools for teachers. Along with an explanation and a short tutorial, he will provide with strategies to embed them in everyday practice so they have a positive impact on learning. In this regard, our presenter is a firm believer that technology should be planned around learning and not the other way around. My colleague Enrique, who is here with the Scientix account, will be helping you with any technical problems you may encounter, so please write to him privately if you experience any difficulties in attending the session. Again, remember to turn down your cameras and your microphones, and also to not take the presenter role, which is the little circle you will find next to Neil's name in the list of participants. At the end of the session, we will have 15 minutes in which you will be able to address any questions to our experts through the chat, but you can still post them during the whole webinar. Uh, that's all from me, so I will leave the floor, the floor to Neil, and I hope you enjoy. Okay, brilliant. Yeah, um, thank you for the welcome, Marina. Um, as Marina said, I'm a teacher, um, and I hope I can um, give you some strategies, um, some really good technology um, to use in your lessons. Um, they can be used um, in a number of ways, um, a number of ages. So I hope this helps. So the first one I want to show you is um, Google Keep. Um, this is a really good app for recording learning effectively. Um, I've used it in science experiments. I've used it with drama lessons. And I've also used it um, for students to share their work and ideas themselves. So let's just have a look. I'll just share my screen with you. And hopefully you can see um, Google Keep. So, can can you see that, everyone? Sure, yes. that's it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Brilliant. Um, so yeah, Google Keep. Just type into um, the Google search engine um, Keep, and it'll be um, one of the top results. And it's basically a note-taking app, and it has a load of uses. You can see this is my personal uh, one, so just any books I want to read, um, things like that. Um, the way I've used it in the classroom is um, for taking notes in class. So the children, it's like a little journal uh, for them. Um, they find it really useful. So let's just have a look. So if we want to take a note, they can give it a title. So it could be maybe um, a history lesson. And then they can just type their notes in. And what's great is um, they can set reminders. So if they need to be reminded of um, a homework task, for instance, and that's really useful. Um, they can share with their friends or the teacher. So after they've um, taken their notes, um, you just click on the collaborator and then type in an email, or if you're already contacts with them, you can put that in as well. Um, you can choose the color of the note, which is really useful. So different subjects, if you, if you teach a range of subjects, um, choose different colors for that. And you can add pictures from the internet or um, anything you've screenshotted. Again, really, really useful um, for keeping things. And then if, you, if you've uh, had enough of the notes, um, archive them, um, and then they're, they can be used maybe in the future. Um, so that's um, a quick overview of Google Keep. The best way to actually explore these apps is to have a go yourself. Um, yeah, just the last things I want to show you, um, you can actually take notes by drawing. So click on the pen tool, and then you can, if you've got a stylus on your mobile, it's not working very well with my mouse here, um, you can erase, um, you can highlight things. Um, so, so that's a really useful um, one as well. And then just the final thing, you can put them in categories as well. So you give them a label, and then you can organize your notes really well. So that's um, Google Keep. 
which goes back towards this. So just, just to recap, um, a science experiment, my students actually took a photo of the key steps in the experiment and then they wrote the notes underneath and uploaded the photos into there. And it was just a really simple way of writing the notes and keeping a record of that. Um, the drama work, again, they took photos, um, they uploaded those, and again, it, it was really useful for them uh, to, do, to reflect as well. And finally, they shared their work. Um, I've done collaborative projects with Google Keep, um, so that's a really useful um, way of using it too. Um, if anyone has any questions um, during um, the webinar at any point, um, I'll try and answer them uh, by reading the chat as well. So if you just type into everyone in the chat any questions you've got about any of the apps, I'll try and answer them um, when I can. Okay, I'll just go into the next one then. I'll also take some questions at the end as well. So the next tool um, is brilliant, it's Kahoot, and it's really a way of gamifying your classroom, and that's basically making learning um, into like a competition. Um, let's have a look at this one. Let's share the screen with you. So again, if you type in Kahoot, what comes up is um, what the students need to type. So you need to type in create Kahoot or um, play Kahoot. And it's this one here, create.kahoot.it. And then you just log in. Um, just a quick note, all of these tech tools that I'm showing you are completely free. Um, some you, you can pay a little bit for an upgrade for some more features, but I, I don't actually need to do that. I've used them all um, completely free. So if you go to create.kahoot.it, and basically we're making a quiz. So you can create a, a quiz here. They're just um, questions with multiple choice answers. A jumble, um, this is actually really new. A jumble, you create um, something and then the children have to put them in order. Um, you can do a simple survey with your class or a discussion. So my class absolutely loves Kahoot. They love doing the quizzes. It's great for um, starting a lesson, ending a lesson, maybe even an end of unit um, kind of assessment just to see, see how the students have got on. So if you give it a title here, just call it test. You can put hashtags in because every Kahoot you make are public. Um, so it's really good for finding um, the one for everyone. Um, choose who it's visible to. You can make private ones if you want. Um, I don't think there's any need. You can add images as well. So I just press OK, go. Oh, I've just got to put some maths in. Okay. Okay, I need some more maths. Um, addition and subtraction. Hopefully that's enough. Okay, and let's choose an audience as well. It's school. Just choose maybe later for that. Okay, brilliant. And here's the um, who's I've made for the maps. So you just press add question. And um, let's just do a tricky one, one plus one. And then you can put the answers in one, two, three, or four. You can add images. This is the images are really useful because you could do a question, um, for instance, what shape is this? Um, give it a time limit. I always award points. It adds to that kind of competition. Um, and then go to next. Okay, and then you've got to um, choose the correct answer. So two, and then next. And you just put in as many questions um, as you want. Once you've done, if you click save, if you're happy with it, it becomes um, public, and then you click play. And what this does is you, it puts it on the screen in front of the, the whole class, and then your students, they go to Kahoot, um, they can download the app as well, um, and just choose the classic. 
and then what happens when they're ready to join it comes up with a game pin and the students just have to go to Kahoot, um, the website or the app and put in the pin and then um, they're ready to go okay let me just stop that okay so once they have a go with um, Kahoot um, it really is a fun way of learning a fun way of assessing it comes up with the leaderboards I can't show you them playing now but it comes up with the leaderboard it tells you who's winning and it doesn't only focus on the winners which is really nice it focuses on um, children that might not have done so well but then they've suddenly got a couple of answers correct um, and that's great just the last thing with Kahoot you don't have to create your own one at all um, like I've just shown you there are millions already created by teachers so if you know the subject that you want to test the students on um, just go into the public Kahoot and search for what you want and it will come up with um, loads and loads just have a quick look at it before playing just to check it's age appropriate and it will suit your um, children but do have a play with that so the main things to remember with Kahoot is go to create.kahoot to create or set a um, quiz and the children just go to Kahoot okay so um, yeah I'm glad to get some good feedback on the um, on the chat which is great um, some people have mentioned Plickers as well um, I'm not going to show that one today but that's another really good app um, yeah that's great okay I'm going to go into the next one so um, this is Google Cardboard I don't know if anyone's tried virtual reality before um, but Google Cardboard is a really um, inexpensive way of um, beginning that so what I'll do is I'll share my screen and just um, I'll try and show you as much as I can with Google Cardboard okay here we go so if you go to Google Cardboard um, you can um, order um, the set they're very inexpensive um, maybe under um, 10 US dollars each one um, I, I bought mine off Amazon.com and you just get them um, sent through and they are just cardboard with um, two Kind of eye holes and what you do is you um, get the cardboard and then you put in the uh, mobile phone or an iPod touch and it really is amazing it's a virtual reality screen so you can see I'm just on the cardboard website this is what the um, Google Cardboard looks like to so just pop the phone in there and the students can look through and it makes um, everything 3d all around them um, and it really is excellent um, the best app I found is Google Cardboard um, it's the actual official app as well um, open that up there's loads of videos um, some games you can um, play for free there's some you can purchase um, but they really really are excellent so let me just go back to my main presentation um, again it's one of these things where you just have to have a go um, with the Google Cardboard and um, ways I've used it um, is for virtual field trips you can actually take students um, to anywhere in the world Google actually uses their street view and they've done loads of um, virtual reality with that so you can type in a place um, and go there and um, they've also got loads of experiences Google expeditions is another really exciting one um, so just the other day I, I took my students um, for their topic mountains you can actually go up uh, Mount Everest and the students are looking all around and viewing and you can actually guide them through um, like a virtual tour and it is much easier um, than you, you'd think um, so some people have said to me oh it sounds very hard to do but actually it's um, quite quite an easy way to um, get them excited 
So I definitely recommend that. Um, the writing prompt is brilliant. I set my students um, on a roller coaster. So you can go to the YouTube app. Um, it's on most phones anyway. And you just go to YouTube and find the 360 videos just by typing them in. There's loads of them. I found a roller coaster video. So I put roller coaster 360 in and the students were on a roller coaster. And it just made them excited to do some writing about their experience. Um, and just the other thing, explore objects. So there's artifacts um, that your class are interested in. You can actually go to loads of the museums in the world and go and have a look at 360 degree photos. And what's great about this is, it, for instance, if it's a statue, um, the, two, the children can actually walk around um, and view it from um, all angles. They can go closer. Uh, there's some great detail and it's, it's just a really, really good way of going places from the comfort of the classroom. So yeah, I definitely recommend um, that one. Um, remember, if there's any questions anyone has, uh, please feel free to type them in the chat. I'm keeping an eye on that as well. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Okay, so having an online classroom has been absolutely um, a brilliant help for me and my teaching. It's basically another way of connecting with my students. So I use Google Classroom, and actually my, my, my whole school use Google Classroom um, as that. You have to have, to set it up, you have to have a, a university or education email. Um, you can't just go in with the at gmail.com. So mine's my school email that I've set up. So I'll just um, share the screen with you just to have a quick look at um, what it looks like. Okay, so let me just go, here we are. So this is my class's Google Classroom. So first things first, if you've got loads of classes, you can actually, um, if you look down on this panel here, um, you can set up your different classes. Um, I, I just have the, the one class um, as I'm a primary school teacher, um, but I am also a member of my colleagues in case we want to post um, to more than one um, group. So I'll just go back into mine. Um, so these are all the teachers and teaching assistants that are members. Again, everyone can um, add things, which is great. And it really is, it's just like Facebook, but your only friends are your students and the other teachers. And here you've got kind of like the wall where um, you can post messages, assignments, students can ask questions. It's got here your any work that's due. Here you've got some topics that you can choose from. You can go to the list of students, you can add students, if you get new students, for instance. Um, and then just a bit of information is there. So let me just show you um, how you can use it. So if you go to add, on the plus here, you can create an announcement. So it's just a simple announcement for your class. So it might be, please remember your homework tomorrow. You might want to add an image or um, something from your Google Drive. You might want to add a YouTube video in. This is great if you're um, doing a lesson the next day and you say, please watch this video, then you haven't um, spent 15 minutes watching the video in class, for instance. Um, but I'm not sure what just happened. Let me just share my screen. Sorry, Neil. Can you hear me? Somebody took the presenter role, so we can't hear you. Could you wait for a second until we fix it? Thank you. Okay. Neil, you should be working already, so please proceed.
just click on um, the plus at the bottom here, and then you can post an announcement. You can attach a file. Um, this might be some information for the students, something in the Google Drive. Um, you can go to your um, YouTube and you can actually put a direct YouTube video in. Um, this is great if you're sharing um, a video, um, for instance, that you want the students to watch. So rather than um, spend 20 minutes, for instance, in a lesson watching, um, students can um, watch it at home and then come in prepared for the lesson. And you can focus on supporting them with that. Um, or just a general website link, which is really useful if, um, you, you know, if, if it's one of those long links, um, you can do that quite easily. So that's an announcement. Um, one of the most useful um, things that I found is creating assignments. So if you just click on create assignments, let's pretend it's some um, home learning. And uh, my instructions are write and ask, put your due date in, whenever you want. Let's just pretend next week. You can put a time in if you want as well. And then what I really like about this is you can create a template in Google Drive. So if you go to Google Drive, um, I'll just put, this is just something me and my class did. We did a kind of adventure story. I've just started it and I want them to write about the lost key, for instance. And then it will send the, the students the lost key. And they, this is just means they can read it. So this could be information. If you want the students to be able to edit, click down here and then you put make a copy for each student, okay? If you look at this one, students can edit the file, that means they all edit the same file. Uh, if there's, you know, 15 in your class, um, you know, it could be up to 30 in your class, that might be a bit too many. So I like making a copy for each student. And when you assign this, it sends a copy to each student. So if you have um, Samantha in your class, um, it will, save a copy for them called the lost key Samantha and then they can edit it and what they do is then they submit and it will come up here and it will tell you how many of your class have submitted the assignment and then you can view it you can add comments you can edit it um, you can suggest improvements and you can also grade it as well okay so that's a re that's been a really really useful thing for me so that, that's the main things about Google Classroom. Just um, the last two, you can um, reuse the post. That's a bit like retweeting something, so it just comes up at the top of the screen. Or you can create a question, and it does kind of a poll, uh, which is great as well. So that's the um, main is about Google Classroom for you. So let me just go back to the presentation. So if you've got any questions. Um, yeah, just to let everyone know, I will be um, sharing the presentation after as well, and it's been recorded as well, okay. Um, when you put the message for students in Google Classroom, must the students be signed into Google Classroom? Um, the students, when you set a, send a message, it sends them a Gmail as well, so it kind of pings up for them. So it's re really good for, you know, connectivity. Um, and they do, they do need to have a Gmail account. Um, if you set up a uh, school account, um, you can actually get these with Google. Um, and it's all for free. And you can actually um, have your classes. They all get an allocated an account. And so my school is the Regent School. So we're all at regents.ac.th. Um, so it, it tells them that it's a school account kind of keeps it safe as well. Um, when we grade students' assignments in Google Classroom, will the grades be visible for all the students? No, it does it individually, and it really is for you for your, your note keeping, and then it sends them the comments and the grade that they get. Of course, you can share um, these with the class, for instance, on the projector if you want. Okay, um, let's just go on to the next one. Okay, so um, create learning quests. So the main way I've done this is by using QR codes. And a QR code, 
Um, you can see them very small ones here. Um, but they're like barcodes. When they're scanned, they come up with information. Um, the difference between barcodes and QR codes is um, you can come up with images, um, videos, website links. They're really, really useful. So let me just show you. So I'll just share my screen with you. Okay, so this is the main one I use, um, qrstuff.com. Um, it's really good, nice and easy to use and free. So choose your data type. What do you want to share with the students? Do you want to share with them a website, a YouTube video, image, a PDF, um, Google Maps? Um, there's just loads and loads of ones. So let's just um, do a website URL. Okay. And then just share my website. Shameless plug. So put the website in. This is EdTech for Beginners, which is my website. You can also find me on Facebook as well. Um, it's a really good way to keep up to date with um, any updates I've got. It's facebook.com and forward slash EdTech for Beginners. Um, and then just choose the static one. You can choose your color, and then you simply press download. Sometimes it comes up with a little advert, just ignore that. And then I'll just download this. This is cool. I'll just call it EdTech. OK. And then let me just see. Here's my EdTech. So once you've done this, you could put this in Google Classroom, um, or you can just display it on the projector if you like and then what your students need to do is um, they need to get their smartphone and they just need to download a um, QR code reader there's loads of them just in the app store or in the Google Play store just type in QR code reader and then they just have to scan it and it'll go beep and then it will take them instantly to the website or if you've uploaded an image the image will pop up or the PDF so it's a really nice way um, to share information and just in a really quick way. Um, one way I've done it, as, the, as I said about the quest, is I put just some simple text with QR codes. So I put a load of math word problems and then I printed the QR codes. So when they were scanned, the word problem came up for the students. And then the one underneath, when that was scanned, it came up with the answer. And I hid them around the, the school, and the students had to go off um, with their phones, and they had to scan the top one and try and answer it, and then they could check their answer with the um, with the bottom QR code. You, if you don't think your students are honest enough to um, do that with the answers, um, that's fine. Don't don't give them the answers. Maybe they can just write down the answers and then bring them back, and then you check them as a class. Completely up to you, but it was just a really nice way. Um, we called it a math hunt. Um, the students really liked it. Let's just go back to the presentation. So I, I just find QR codes are engaging. Um, they let you um, share information quickly. They make the students active. The students go around looking for things, which is great. It's excellent for group work. My students work together. Um, you know, if they're doing a QR code lesson. On some occasions, the children have actually made their own QR codes and then shared them with their friends as well. And just finally, really, really useful um, adding videos to them because when, when the students scan the QR codes, um, the video instantly pops up on the screen and it's just really engaging for them and really simple to do. Okay, I'll just see if there's any more questions. Yeah, some people like the treasure hunt idea. And Caroline said about using QR codes um, for hidden notes from tests. I like that idea. So maybe a clue or something or a bit of a support, um, that'd be really good. And someone's asked, are these 
tools available for free. Yet yeah, all of the tools um, I'm showing today are completely free. Some have a, a few ad, um, adverts, but they're not um, invasive at all. Um, and some of them you're, you might be encouraged if you want to um, pay something for an extra feature, for instance. Um, you can do that. OK. Um, let me just go into the next one. OK, so um, the next one I'm going to show you is Padlet. And this is a really, really good app. Um, and it's also a website. Um, and you can create a class learning wall. So we'll have a look at that. Let me just share the screen. And it's a really, really good way um, for collaboration. And actually, you'll be able to um, do this too with me. So let's just go back here. So just type in padlet.com and you'll come to your dashboard. You've got to log in, of course, um, but again, nice, nice and easy and it's free as well to do. So Padlet, let's set up our first one. So just click make a Padlet and it will start up this um, blank wall for you. Okay, so let's give it a name. Okay, just want to try. Okay, so I'm just going to type in something on our Padlet. So, um, who uses Padlet? What do you think? So, this is the wall, and it's really easy to use. So you can add text, you can um, do a little voice recording. So you just click on the um, voice recording there and that will let you do that. You can add links as well. Um, so if you want to share links, that's a really easy way of doing it. Um, there's absolutely loads of different things you can do. Photos and just base, basic text as well. Okay, so I could take a photo from the webcam. I probably won't work because I'm video conferencing. Never mind. So, once you've put your information up, um, I've done it in math lessons where I've put questions up um, and students have to answer the questions. I've done collaborative work. So, while the students are watching a, a video or a documentary, they can um, put any questions they've got, or it's really good for a nice discussion because then they can add um, some information as well. Um, so what I want to do now, I'm just going to share this with you and see if anyone here, if you've got a um, computer or phone handy, um, that would be great. So let's just have a quick look. So let's make it public. So you, this is how you can share it with your class. And then you can choose whether your class can write, that means edit, um, they can moderate or they can read as well. I'm just going to share. So you can scan this QR code and it will instantly um, get you in if you want. Okay. So if anyone's got a QR reader, have a go at scanning that. That'd be great. Let's see if I can get anyone involved. Never mind if we can't. Okay, so we've got a few people starting already. That's great. Okay, and you can also type in um, this link. It is easier with the QR code. So you can, if you want, you can type in this link or scan the 
QR codes. Completely up to you. What's really good about Google Classroom is I often just copy and paste the link into Google Classroom, and they just have to, to just click, and that's that's great. Okay, so and you can move things around on the screen. So we've got some people from Italy here, and Greece, and Portugal. And it, you can just see it's a really nice way of um, sharing information, really simple. Um, really like that. Okay, so I'm just going to close this one down. Thank you for joining my Padlet. And let's go back to the presentation. Okay, so yeah, just, just in review, great for sharing ideas, great for discussions. Great for peer review because you can put the picture um, on. It's really good if you've got an iPad or a phone. The students can actually take a photo of um, a piece of artwork um, that they've done, for instance, or a video of some drama, and they can upload it straight away. And then the students can easily all watch it, and then they can add comments underneath that. And it really is a nice way of um, and simple to do. So yeah, have a go at that. And also interactivity. Students commenting, um, students helping each other, supporting each other, giving advice. It's a really nice um, one to do. Um, let's just read some comments here. So someone said about um, there's browser extensions for Padlet. So that's a great idea. Just go to the, um, the Chrome store or the web browser store you're using. Someone's using Padlet in e-twinning projects. That's great. So combining with a different school. What a great way to share work and share information. Okay, yeah, we've got quite a few people learning. Oh, that's a nice idea, as a learning diary. I like that idea. So it could be a joint learning idea, di sorry, diary, and then shared. Brilliant. So yep, yeah, that's Padlet, great tool. Okay, the next one I want to show you is Orasma. So Orasma is augmented reality. Um, Pokemon Go has been really big at the moment um, with um, students and adults alike. Um, it's basically using the um, phone's camera or the iPad's camera, and then um, it, an image is overlaid on the picture. So for this one, I just want to show you um, how, how to use it um, by using a YouTube video that I've um, recorded before. I think that's the easiest way, um, just because holding up my phone would be a bit difficult. So let's just share the screen with you. I think... Let me just try and share. Might be easier. I shared the browser. Okay. Orasma is an amazing augmented reality app. This basically means you can detect an image and then place another image or video on top of it. So let's open up the app. Can everyone hear this? And you can explore um, some already made orasmas. And you can see some famous logos there, which you will detect and put something else on top. So have a go at that. Let's create our own by going to the plus button. And it will load some overlays for you. So just have a look at which ones you might like. These are the ready-made ones. So I'm just going to choose the dragon. Because in my classroom, I've got this uh, Chinese New Year um, lucky um, well, a decoration basically. So take a photo of that, give it a quick name. So this is the name of your ready made Orasma, and then you click finish. And then detect things, and you'll notice that when it detects the um, lucky decoration, dragon appears magically on top. Uh, so let's try it. Point the um, screen to wherever you want and you can see when it goes onto the decoration the dragon appears and um, flies around.
I just want to show you now how to um, use this in a maths lesson. So the lesson was on 3D shapes, and I asked the students to um, make 3D shape property or azimuth. So this time I'm going to create by pressing plus, and then this time we're not going to do a ready-made one. We're going to go to the device for the overlay, and then choose the media. I choose a photo, and in the books I asked the students to write the properties of different 3D shapes. So there's the cuboid with its properties. So just give the name um, to the overlay, and then choose yes to you want to create that. And then I come to bring in different 3D shapes. Um, so here's a little box of cereal, a cuboid, um, take the picture of that, and then apply the overlay to that. And you can move the overlay around so it's not exactly on top of it. So just position it there. Uh, give your full orasma the name. I'm just going to call it cuboid orasma. Um, I say to the students, keep it private, and then click finish. And then you'll notice when you look around um, with the Orasma camera, it's not detecting anything. But when you get to the um, serial box, um, it's great. It comes up with the um, properties of the serial box, the cuboids. So it's a really nice tool um, to use in um, shapes lessons, especially. Um, you can share it if you want, um, save it to the photo gallery. Um, yeah, there's lots of things to do. Thank you very much. Okay, so I hope I hope people um, got kind of the gist of all Um Just to recap, you get an image. It has to be quite a like a, an outstanding image. Everyone can just turn off their uh, any videos that they've got. So yeah, it gets an image. It's got to be kind of a striking and outstanding image. Um, it can't be kind of a plain image. And once the camera detects the image, um, the overlay um, pops up. It's really, really useful. Um, I've used it for displays. So the students have created an image, and when the students go with their camera and it detects the image, an actual video of them speaking um, comes up. So the students, for instance, they did um, argumentative writing. We did should zoos be banned, and we had for and against. And the ones with for, they, they may have um, they, they drew an image, and then the other students could come up and actually video with the camera and the video of the students um, saying their argument popped up um, and it really looks amazing. It's kind of a, you know, a really good thing to do with your students. So hopefully you can give all asthma a go. Um, ha have a practice at it first, um, it, but it's well worth, well worth doing. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Okay, so this is an assessment tool. It's called Typeform, and it's a way of making quizzes, tests, assessments. Um, it's really nice, really easy to use, and it looks really good as well. So let's have a quick look. Let me just share the screen with you. Okay, so just type in type form into your search engine and click the top one. Login, again, completely free. You can see here it's got an upgrade option, but I've never found that I've needed to. And then I'm going to create a new type form. You can start from scratch or use a template. Let's go to the start from scratch. I'm just going to call this test. And then start building your type form. Okay, and this is kind of like your work area. So this is an online test um, that I did for my students um, in the past. And here's your main builder. So you start building, that's kind of putting in the questions. Then you change the design, and then you can configure um, and share 
decide who's got access and then analyzes where it actually marks tests um, and gives you good graphs and data. So let's do a quick one. So I just want, okay, so I'm just going to put my first question in. So what is your favorite? And then you can put an extra description in if you want. Completely up to you. You can add an image. You can set the number of characters that is needed in the answer. Um, if you're happy with that, press save. So you can see this is what it's going to look like. What's your favorite text tool? Um, and then the answer goes there. Let's press save. Okay, so that's number one. Um, I think we can have a. Just a basic welcome screen, so welcome to the quiz. Happy with that. Um, so you can see, I the first one I did was a short text answer. Um, it was just a nice and simple answer, really good for surveying your class if you want the opinions or anything like that. Long text um, is exactly the same as short text, but it, it lets them have kind of a paragraph answer. Um, you can add a statement that's just kind of instruction like the next part of the test will be um, on shape and measure, for instance. You have drop down menus, multiple choice, you can choose some pictures, yes or no answers, they can do ratings. So let's have a quick look at that one. So again, put in the question. Um, who you like? Sport. Not sorry, sport. Um, and then you can choose the number of stars. So if you want it out of ten, five, whatever is best for you. You can choose even if you change from hearts. Um, oh, maybe a sporty thing would be good, like a trophy. When you're happy, again you can add images. Oh, just uh, quite an important one is required. You can choose um, whether the students have to answer, so they can't skip questions. So if you want that, just click on the click save. So that I do. So that's my mini quiz. Then go to design, and this is where you change, you know, the what it looks like, the colours, all those kind of things, the fonts that are used, the background image. Um, or you can make it easy for yourself and choose a theme here. And again, there's really nice ones you can use. So let's just choose. Um, that was a better theme outdoors. It was kind of sporty, wasn't it? Let's see what this looks like. So just click on it when you're happy. Okay, nice and simple. Let's go straight to configure. Uh, can you just save the change here? Okay. Okay, it's just covered by my video here. Apply to the type form when you're happy. Okay, and then let's go to configure. Okay, here you've got the basic settings, um, lots of different options you can choose from. Just the language there. You can choose the status whether it's public or private. You have to have the type form branding on there unless you pay. Then finally, let's go to share and analyze. So this is who you share with. So you just copy and paste the link. Again, Google Classroom is really useful. I just paste the link in and the students click and they're ready to go. You can also share it on social media if you want, or you can actually embed it in a web page if you have a school blog or a school website. The quiz will actually be embedded in there. And the final thing, analyze. This gives you loads of information. So I can't actually do this now, but when your students have answered the quiz or the test. The results come up in here, and you can see um, it's really easy to use. So it, it tells you how many have visited. Let's go to the results. 
here the results are really nice you can download an Excel spreadsheet of them um, you can order them from w w which one you want and then just my favorite is the reports this gives you the pie charts um, it gives you the um, bar charts and all those kind of things so really useful tool for um, quizzes and tests there okay let's see if we've got any questions but what's what's the difference between Typeform and Google Forms? Um, they're pretty similar, to be honest. I would I like Typeform just because I find it very easy to use, and I, I like the way it um, marks the results for you and gives you some nice graphs as well. So yeah, thank you for that question. Um, okay. Right, let's go into the next text, text tool. Okay, so the next one is Google Slides. It's a presentation software. Um, really, really easy to use. Um, I'll just quickly show you it. It should be nice and easy. So again, go to Google Slides. It saves it all online. There's a few that I've made already. Um, so just start a new one. And you've instantly got your title, just like normal presentation. I won't show you too much there. It's just really nice to use. You've got the themes on the side, so you can get your designs looking really nice. Um, my favorite thing about Google Slides is the collaboration. So to add people, you can just share. So at the moment, it's private. Just go to share. You can um, type in people's names. Um, you can add them, very easy to do. They can edit it, they can just comment, or they can just view, it's completely up to you. So I've had you know, the whole class working on a presentation together, which has been really nice um, for the collaboration. Really nice and simple one there. And the final one is Canva. Yeah, this is probably one of my um, favorite um, makers for graphics and posters. It's really easy to use and it just looks really effective. So if you've got any um, lessons where the students need to make a, um, a poster or um, some graphical information, it's, it's the one. So let's have a quick look at this. So again, just go to Canva, put it into your search it's not canvas, that's what I thought at first, it's Canva. Um, go to canva.com, log in, again it's free, you can buy some upgrades if you want, um, but you don't have to. And then you just go to create a design. So um, let me just share the screen with you, so you can see. And let's get up Canva. Here we are. So here's some that I've made already. You can choose the size. So these ones are perfect for social media. These are excellent for presentations if you want it to be kind of the title screen. Got a poster. You can choose A4. Um, completely up to you. Let me just go to A4. When you click on it, it will instantly open it up for you. And it's a bit, bit quicker. Here we go. Um, so just the, the basics, you've got your layout here. So you can actually go down, there's already classroom rules, it's quite nice. And I usually don't start from scratch. I think it's usually best to choose the template. So I'm just gonna choose this one and grab that one. So when you're happy with it, just click on it and it will appear in the main screen. Okay, here we go. So it doesn't matter if your topic's completely different, just having that template for the students is um, really useful. So again, they just have to click on the different elements and they can um, type a, a new one. They can add their own pictures. It's 
just really helps them having that template for the um, just the layout and it just gives them a bit of inspiration to use that. So that's an easy way to do that. It's great for projects. Now the next bit, go to elements. Here you can add photos. There's lots of free ones. Um, you can add a frame, so borders round. You can see there's quite a lot of free ones. Other ones you have to um, pay for. So shapes, add in some nice graphics. You can put in your own lines, illustrations. I quite like the icons. If you want it to maybe make an infographic, um, very handy for that. You can add charts. Um, so yeah, loads of to use. If you want to put more text in, it's got some really nice fonts, um, some ready-made ones. Again, all, all of the text can be edited really nice and easily. And finally, you've got background as well. So they're all the ready-made ones. If you want to put your own images or your own graphics in, just go to Uploads. And it saves your uploads in the cloud anyway. Um, but you can then upload your own images. So my students can go to Google Images, for instance, download um, the picture, and then um, upload that there. So Canva, really, really great for making posters and graphical information and infographics. Um, just back on this one, um, the last thing with Canva, you, you can collaborate. So you just click the share, and then you can have a group of students working together. Um, and you know, they, as someone said earlier, it doesn't need to be from the same school. It can be all over the world. So that's my presentation over on the hour perfectly. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If there's any questions now, I'm just going to um, maybe for a few minutes um, answer any questions on any of the tools. So if you just put in the chat any questions, that would be great. Thank you, Neil, for the presentation. Uh, it's Marina. Hi. Uh, on the meantime, while we see if anyone asks something on the chat, I think we missed a couple of um, questions uh, during the presentation. Okay. Um, I wrote them down so I can ask them directly. Um, Constantina is asking for all the tools if they're free, and then Antoine also, it generically for all the tools, if there's any limitation when registered under age students or under 18 people. Um, no, they're, they're all completely free. Um, as I said, some, some you need to um, upgrade if you want extra features, but for day-to-day -day use in the classroom, um, the, the free ones are um, perfectly fine. So okay. yeah, they've been great. Okay, then there was another one uh, regarding Google Classroom, and it said uh, when you grade students' assessments in Google Classroom, will this be visible? That was the question. Okay, yeah. It, it's visible to the, the teachers who are in that group, so you, you assign um, the teachers separately to the students. Um, it's not visible to the other students, it's just visible to the teacher and the student that you've graded. Okay, uh, there was another one as well for, uh, for Erasma. Tulia was asking, uh, I quote literally, do you have any suggestion for good triggers in Orasma? That was the question. Yeah, I, I usually ask my students um, if it's um, going to be them drawing something. Um, I tell them to use at least three different colors and keep, keep it kind of um, a, a basic image, but the, the three colors seems to work well. Um, if they're using an object, um, we actually started when we were doing that shapes lesson, just basic shapes, and it couldn't pick them up. So we used um, different like packaging. Packaging is always bright, um, so that that worked really well. Yeah, just make sure it's a, a variety of colours, and you know, it's, it's something that's a bit outstanding. Okay. <laughs> uh, so uh, I don't see any other questions. Everyone's really happy otherwise uh, for the presentation. So I okay, think we're going to close it now because it's already we're already a bit behind on time. So to all the participants, thanks for taking part in the webinar and for sharing your ideas and resources. And of course, uh, Neil, thanks a lot for presenting. It was a really good presentation.
And in the upcoming days, we will send a follow-up email with a survey, and then we will also upload the recording and the materials of this webinar on the Scientific Resources Repository. So again, thanks everyone for, for participating. And Neil, if you want to say anything else, uh, I'll leave it to you. But thanks again. Yeah, no, just thank, thanks everyone um, for listening. Hope it was really useful. Um, just if you want um, updates from my blog, um, it's edtechforbeginners.com, um, and you can get updates on Facebook as well. So it's facebook.com forward slash edtechforbeginners. Okay, thank you very much. I hope it was useful to everyone.